you know, I'm just Dan Flanagan from Boston, you know. So not just you are the Dan yeah, Flanagan. I am the Boston. Dan Flanagan, yes. Welcome to the three o'clock coffee podcast, a place where extraordinary people network together to share meaningful stories that inspire others. Do you have a great story you would like to share with the world? If so, go to three o'clock coffee.com and sign up today to be on our show. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and tell a friend about the three o'clock coffee podcast. My name is Scott Proposky. Today, we are meeting with Dan Flanagan. Dan is a money guy. He's in the financial planning world. But not only is he wicked smart, as we say in Boston, but his love for his family is so inspiring. Let's go inside the cafe and meet Dan Flanagan. Hey, thanks, thanks, Scott. Great to see you. But before we start, Dan, I have to ask you, what kind of coffee do you like? (laughs) <laughs> That's a great question. I'm a real basic drip coffee guy, half calf, half regular coffee, half decaf, little milk. Probably more Starbucks versus Dunkin' Donuts around here. Oh, Starbucks That's versus that. the Dunkin', huh? Yeah. Yeah, there's usually like the Nikon versus Canon. There you so, go. <laughs> as being in the photography world, that's my that's my metaphor. Do you find like at three o'clock, like most people here just need to pick me up? Like, what do you do at three o'clock? Yeah. I do. I do. It's probably a little earlier for me because caffeine will keep me up at night. But, you know, two o'clock. Yeah, I've had a nice lunch, hopefully a salad. We'll see. And uh, an afternoon will pick me up a little break, especially during COVID, right? We're all either work from home or in the office. We're behind a Zoom call all day long or on a podcast. It's nice to have a little break and you go for a walk and get a cup of coffee. You know, it's interesting you say um, you really, it sounds like you're really in tune with your, your body. You're so self-aware. Uh, most people will not say, I, I can't have coffee after 2 p.m. because it'll keep me awake. And, and you know that you've, you've done it before, so you know. Yeah, I got to tell you, you know, I'm turning 50 this year. My wife already did. I like to point that out. She's nine months older than me. <laughs> um, and I kind of just decided, you know, in the fall, as I was getting to know you and join Coach, I'm sure we'll talk about that, but I decided I want to... I don't necessarily roar into 50, but I don't want to limp into it. And I just need to make some changes in my life. It's, you know, I'm on the second, I'm on the back nine in a way right now. So I want to um, be more in tune with what I should be doing. And that's, that's a piece of it, right? Your intake. So yeah, I think we all go through that. I mean, I'm, I'm 53, a young 53, by the way. Hey, you look younger than me. And <laughs> thanks, Dan. And I knew I liked you. It's kind of a mindset, right? And um, it's a good mindset to be knowing that we're we're a future mindset to think further in the future. Like, I want to be healthy. If you want to run a company and have a business, I want to make sure that I can live longer than my work career <laughs> so you can enjoy it. I think that's really important for a lot of people that are are very self-driven, very focused. A lot of entrepreneurs, they, they want to be healthy for a very long time to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Well, it takes a lot of energy to do what we do, right? And the best way to kind of generate extra energy for yourself is take care of yourself and exercise. And we have two kids and we're older parents. You know, we have an 18-year-old and a nine-year-old. I want to be around, you know? I I have got 10 more years before my little one graduates high school. So I need to be around. I want to watch her be married one day. I want to be grandkids. I I got a lot I want to do. It's fun. It breaks up the the day. Yeah, it's like having a kid. Welcome to the club. You know, you don't get... It's not about focus and just about work. Whatever you can do to, to break that magnet from work to something else is always good. Right? I used to be that guy that would make fun of people if you see them out in the rain or in the snow, you know, or here in the Boston area. I'm like, look at that person out there with their dog. And now I'm that guy. But it's a blessing because, like you said, it's a little break. You walk the dog, you come back refreshed. Like, okay, this is good. You know, I had my last book out and uh, I talk about ADHD and we both belong to Strategic Coach, great coaching program um, based in Toronto, Canada, co-founder Dan Sullivan. Dan and I had conversations in the past. Dan publicly says he has ADHD, kind of mentioned to me. He goes, Scott, have you ever been tested? So as the story goes on, I have. Thank you, Dan. (laughs) But one of the key points of having ADHD for somebody is to have a pet, get a dog. And it's for that exact reason to make you not be so hyper-focused on one thing. The company of a dog, pet, 
uh, will break that attention to do other things and to break that up and, and just have that comfort of a pet has been proven to be really pos- positive in a lot of people's lives. Oh, I agree. And I, I, it's okay to mention, you know, your book was very, you were very open in your book about your own kind of um, journey. And I think that to me, it's one of the reasons why it was so, um, such a valuable book to read because you can relate to people. They tell you their story, right? And you're like, there's a piece in there that, oh yeah, I've sometimes done that too. At the end of the day, maybe, you know, bending the elbow instead of going for a workout or something like that um, or what have you. So this different thing that I just thought that was really and obviously the metaphors between the lens and other things uh, were very powerful. I think it's an excellent read. And if it isn't doing well, it should do better on Amazon and everybody. You know, you know, my main purpose was just really to you know, help others. And that's the reason for the podcast. When people hear this podcast and they say, how can I get one thing out of this conversation? And that's my goal. And, and sometimes I'll have, I'll be at a presentation or a Zoom call. And it's terrible. <laughs> horrible, right? It's a bad presentation. But instead of just being say, oh, this is terrible. This is a bad Zoom call. The guy's doing it wrong. I switched my mindset and said, okay, if this was me, how could I do it better? And then I'm looking for their, all the wrong things, right? And then I'm learning something. So even if you're in a bad meeting and you don't agree with that, ask yourself, well, how would you fix it? What would you do? Yeah, I like that different perspective. I think, I think that's excellent. It's kind of like um, you know, they talk about your your environment, and I think it's critical. That's a simple thing. Like I say that to my teenager a lot. Like, look, you know, sometimes you need to move to a different part of a house. You've been here for months because of COVID. Right. Right. You change your environment. We went to Newport for a couple of nights last week during school vacation week, uh, and it was just what a blessing that was to be somewhere different in a different environment. Even though we were still together, which they were probably bored with. Um, the changing of your environment and shifting it up a bit is critical. Yeah, even more than, I mean, your perspective. I, yeah, I mean, I believed in that years ago and it's more relevant today. So if you had to learn one thing that you just don't know enough about, what would you want to learn? Oh, gosh. Not 100, just one, just one. How to raise kids better, you know? Um, yeah. I don't I know that's probably all, not what you're looking for, but... I think we all say that. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I did learn, well, many things, right? But the one, my one takeaway one day when I had a conversation with Dan Sullivan was, um, and he, a quote, this is what he said to me. And I asked him, like, how do you deal with difficult people? <clears throat> like, I just, I'm struggling right now. Like, I just, I'm moving so fast. I want to accomplish so much. Dan, how do you deal with difficult people? And he said, Scott, if you can anticipate a problem, you don't have a problem. Mm. I'm like, hmm, really? He goes, it's like when I go to the airport, when we did travel, <laughs> you know, I, I plan for a two and a half hour ride to the airport. I know it's only 30 minutes from where I live, but I make sure I go early so I don't have to worry about the traffic. And then I go and have a cup of coffee, take out my Kindle, read my Kindle get on the plane. I'm not worried about anything. And I've just solved the problem. I anticipated having traffic. And I'm like, that's, that's so simple. It's brilliant. <laughs> so I use it all the time. I use it all the time. I think I, I said, if you can anticipate a problem, you don't have a problem, which kind of helps some people in conflict and conversations is uh, I try to make light of the conversation and say, hmm. Another thing you need to ask this, but I'm going to just say it. Focus, you know, I mean, and I think that's a big piece. That's your, your book. That's a big piece of the a big benefit of the coaching program that we're in is it's very hard when you're a creative person and you care about people. I mean, I'm in a service business. A lot of us in a service business. I, I'm in the business because I care about people and I really want to help them. I feel like I'm, that's my purpose to help with the stewardship of people's finances. But I also have a lot of different interests, personally, professionally, mm-hmm. and it's very easy to get distracted by the shiny new thing or whatever, or to be almost overhelping to the point where you're you're not getting you're not focused on the important things. Like I'm a business owner, I got to focus on running the business. I got to focus on my family. I got to focus on serving clients. You know, the coaching program has really helped me to just hone down every week, every month, every quarter. Like what 
uh, my priorities and trying to kind of let go of some other stuff, even though they might be fun and useful and maybe God, part of my purpose is to do some of that stuff. I can't do it all at once. Right. Uh, and I think focus is another thing that I need to get better at. So. Yeah. It, you know, every time I say yes to something, I'm saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. So if I say yes to this project, there's got to be something else I'm going to say no to. Not knowingly, but it's going to happen because we can't do it all. And my wife used to say that all the time. She said, okay, so now the church wants you to be on the finance committee. That's mm. great. What are you going to say? No, what are you taking off my, your plate? I'm like, what do you mean I'm taking off my plate? I'm not taking something off my plate. <laughs> you have to. Right. Or basically something falls off because you don't get it done or what have you. So. Or, or you just have more coffee late in the afternoon. <laughs> stay up, three o'clock. Yeah. Stay, up, stay up longer, right? Yeah. We do our businesses because of, of freedom, freedom of time. Mm -hmm. Right. But also because we're passionate about what we do because we want to do it. You don't need to do it. We want to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we need a drink, but we want a drink, mm -hmm. right? Kind of my analogy of like want and need, right? Do you find that you are always working all the time because you want to work? <laughs> it's a great point. I don't need to be a big um, advertisement for strategic coach or a coaching program, but that is a con that's a struggle with an entrepreneur, right? So if you're passionate about what you do, and I feel like I'm a real lucky person. I mean, the average person, I don't think, loves what they do. They're maybe punching the clock. They have, you know, they have, we all have bills. They have uh, college to fund and retirement and all that stuff. I just feel so lucky every day, and I love it. So it's a, it's a, you know, people ask me what my hobbies are. God, family, and ice cream probably are my hobbies. <laughs> and my business, that's it. I mean, that's all I, I don't really have a lot of other stuff. So, um, yes, I struggle with that. But again, be honest with you, the coaching program has helped me, helped me take more time off. And when I'm off, to be off. Like I had said to you, we were emailing back and forth, and I was a little bit late getting back to you because I took a free day. I took a day off where I actually did nothing related to the business, and I just did stuff with my family. And that's so refreshing. We all know that you go on a week vacation, you actually take the vacation, you come back, and you come back, and you're so able to focus, you're so energized because you had a chance to recuperate. It's like a machine. You can't run a machine forever without repairing it. It's like your lawnmower. It needs to be serviced. You're a snowblower if you live in Boston. It needs to be serviced. Yeah. It, it, you know, for the listeners out there, um, Dan and I learned something called, as I got my puppy there, I'm going to pause here for a moment. <laughs> Willie, come here. I've got to, I've got to edit the video out. Somebody shut up the door. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably like Amazon or something. So just hang on. <laughs> Working from home. We're all like have to deal with the kids and the dog. So hang on here, you know. <laughs> okay. So. That might be kind of funny to keep in actually. What's that? What? that might be kind of funny to keep in because it's real. He's real. It's, yeah, you know what? You're right. It might go viral, right? Um, <laughs> life with Willie. Life with Willie. Um, okay, now I got distracted. What did I say? <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> we both got distracted. Um, we were talking oh, about free days. The, uh, okay, the time free days. system. Oh, yeah, free days. So uh, so for the people that, that are listening, um, Dan and I belong to, a, obviously, a great coaching program that we both enjoy. But we have something that they call free days. And free days is a system that they created, Dan Sullivan, where you just take 24 hours of no work. You're not carrying your cell phone. You're not reading business books. But you're taking time for the things for you, family, time away, golf swimming, running. And it's something that I've never done before. And I, I think Dan would probably see him shaking his head that we always work because we're passionate about working. But like anything else, if you can just recharge the batteries, you find that you're more productive with less time at, in the office. And I think, oh, yeah, I mean, you can probably feel that right now that that's happening for you. Absolutely. And it's a zero sum game. I mean, there's, you know, we have all these different areas in our lives that are priorities. And if, if you're not taking care of your, yourself physically or, or you're taking care of your family or your finances, and you, if you're doing, spending too much time in one area, another area suffer, suffers. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a struggle. I need to do better. I'm actually taking two weeks off in a row this summer, which shouldn't wow. sound so revolutionary, but I am. No, I, I think a lot of people listening will go, I'm wow, telling my really? team, I'm telling my yeah. clients that basically... Good. 
It's good. I'm not going to be around those two weeks. And it's the summer, so it's a little bit quieter because most of my clients are taking time off around here, right? That time of year. But yeah. That's good. And I might even take a third week, the week in the beginning of September when the kids are back in school so me and my wife can do some stuff. And then in December, my daughter's going to college for the first time this year, her first year. I think we're going to go to we have a Disney timeshare, right? And so I think we're going to actually head back that way because that's a, a lot of family memories there and just bring the family back together. So anyway, so that's like four weeks. Right. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but from now to the end of the year, compared to what I did in the past years, if I took two weeks off, I'd be surprised straight. You know? Yeah, or, 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 you know, go on vacation, you bring your laptop, you bring your work. and Right. You know, you're physically there, but your mind's not, right? And it it's, I've been there, of course. And you come back to work and you're like, you felt like you never left. <laughs> you felt like you never left. I say that every year Labor Day. Well, mm-hmm. how was your summer? It was great. Well, I didn't take time off, and I'm like mad at everybody else, yeah. like in my office, and it's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Felt like I never left because because I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, great program. And a little secret to that is is go into your Outlook, go into your Google Calendar, and actually cross off the days you don't want to work. And because when something does come up, you can say. Oh, no, that's my free day. I'm not going to book something that day. So it's a little bit helpful if you can actually pre-plan and put it in the calendar right now for the entire entire 2021, right? I'm working on it. <laughs> I, it's a work in progress. As long as we can talk about it, we're in good shape. Here's, uh, so, so, Dan, here's another great question for you. I know you're in the financial advisor role in business. What would be the one thing, and I'm big on the one thing, one thing that you could tell somebody that if you do this, just this tiny little thing, financially, you may see an improvement. Yeah, I don't know if it's tiny or not, but I'll tell you, I was uh, got married in 1998, about nine months after our wedding and our honeymoon, we went on a trip. Um, it was, uh, so anyways, we went on a trip. I'm sitting there on the trip reading a book, The Millionaire Next Door. Oh, yeah. I have that. That's a book you keep. You just leave in your bookshelf. And I got to tell you, that book was revolutionary. Yeah. I was a CPA, but I wasn't really doing finances. I was doing audit yeah. and tax compliance. And I read that book, and I was like, wow, it's all about your spending. Mm. The Millionaire Next Door is, there's a multimillionaire living next door. You don't even know that he's a multimillionaire because he's just living regular life. He's living below his means, and he's saving, saving, saving. It's all about our spending habits. That's it. If you keep your lifestyle, it creates more opportunities for you if you're spending less than you're making. Then you don't have to buy this big house like I bought that I have to make a certain amount of money to keep the house. It's right. stupid. It's a reverse of what we do. We, we mm-hmm. do the reverse of what's important in this country. Yeah. Yeah. It, it works so hard. Spending through Quicken mm-hmm. program is the best thing that you, you can do. Track, track what you spend because you track can't it, rationalize out of what you're spending when you see it on a piece of paper. Yeah, wow, that's really interesting. Um, just the other day, I went to I had coffee with somebody else in real life, and we had um that's Willie in the background. We're gonna leave it for the podcast. We'll, we show, a, we'll show a picture of Willie later, but he's my four month old black lab Labrador, so <laughs> we'll deal with it. Um, so I went to coffee with somebody, and we had a conversation about finances because I'm really intrigued with it. And he casually mentioned, you know, well, you know, I, I think I'm doing pretty good. I got I got four million dollars saved, and you know, he's going on just very casually talking. And I'm like, and I, I was thinking that book, Dan, The Millionaire Next Door. And I'm like, he drives just a regular car, right. one one car, yeah, regular house. Like most people would think that that would be a, like a billionaire. You should buy brand new cars and drive BMWs and do all this sort of things. And that's not the case. It's not the case at all. I think we all have this vision of uh, all these people who have these huge liquidity events. They have a company they sell. That's not reality for 99.9% of the people. It's basic blocking and tackling of what our parents did, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we can criticize what our parents did. My parents raised six kids, all boys, by the way. With one car and walked six miles in the snow. Right. One shower, by the way, was hard. Um, We did too. We did too. You know, I mean, and and they made it happen because they did the basic stuff. They saved. Do you you think it's, you know, this whole, I'm not really caught into it, but obviously I watch the news and I'm self-aware of everything. But this this social media phenomena going on 
that people looking at other people's lives and feeling like, <sighs> I don't have that. I need this. I don't have that. I need this. What's it it's the point now, Scott, where like we were down in Newport and we were having a blessed day. You know, we've had a rough couple of years with some health issues with my daughter. And we're down in Newport and I'm, I'm actually out on, on the rooftop. My wife having a drink with my kids are inside getting along. And I take a snapshot of my wife and I send it to a couple of buddies who used to vacation together now in Newport. And I was going to put it on a Facebook and I'm thinking like, then I feel like I'm like everyone else is posting what's great about my life. But you didn't see all the crap that was going on the last couple of years. And my good friends know about it. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I think that there's, I think that it's, um, wonderful this is a way to actually keep in touch with a lot of people you haven't seen in a long time and see their families i get to see my nieces and nephews and it can be very dangerous because it's not all it's most of it's not real yeah i you know not to bring up my book and that's not the purpose but social media in, in the chapter is called resolution mm -hmm. and the image that you want to portray yourself as and when you look at social media and i compare it to the photography days of, of a contact sheet and getting to see all these images perhaps maybe having a bride or groom back in the day when I did do wedding photography, the bride wanted a certain image of what she wanted to portray herself. Good, bad, you know, I thought it was, this photo was better than this photo. But those are the simple days, as I call them. And today, it just amplified so much more about how people want them to be portrayed as. And Scott, so, think about like all these teenagers that are having all these mental health issues these days during COVID and all that stuff. When I didn't get invited to your party, I didn't hear about it until like Monday school, but, but I know now, you know, right this second who people who have, it's just like, obviously there's a lot of good with it. I'm just saying there's some stuff that's just hard. It's just hard. It's hard. We, I don't even fully understand it because I didn't grow up like that. Mm. Right? I was born in 1971. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have a cell phone. We didn't have computers in the house. It's, it's my nine year old walks around with a, you know, an iPod. Yeah, right. we had to actually get up off the couch and change the channel. Yeah, right. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, how is that actually Did you hear the channel you? No, you didn't hear the channel you. I mean, You're not on. old enough. You know, I just finished a book uh, called The Underdog. Dean talks about if you have problems like, oh, somebody didn't invite me to your party and I need to do that, you need bigger problems. Can't keep everybody happy. Yeah. You need bigger problems. Yeah. <laughs> have jumped around over the years in my different offices. The one thing that I always did for some reason is have a little cafe and we'd have a, you know, all the coffees and, and it kind of inspired me to do this three o'clock coffee podcast. But in, I know we're all working from home right now, but how was the coffee scene at your office? Did you have this coffee scene or, or, you know, a lot of people call it the water bubbler conversation killer, right? Everybody hangs around the water bu bubbler and kind of talks, but we're not doing that anymore. Right. We're not hanging around the water bubbler. Right. Describe around that coffee conversation because it's usually casual. What, what kind of conversations happened? Well, it's interesting. I would say that our current setup is lame. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my partners. We probably need to upgrade it a bit. And with COVID, there's not a lot of that happening, of course. But my my preference always over the years, because I, was, I, had, I had great mentors that would say, hey, Dan, let's go to lunch. You know, prior to the coffee, having a cup of coffee, let's go to lunch. And we would just have to, we spend time over a meal and we would talk about stuff. And they would mention me. And so I've used, a, hey, let's go get a cup of coffee and just go for a walk with a member of the team or something and just as a way to kind of check in with people i love that process of my daughter always makes fun of me like oh you're just gonna get a cup of coffee yeah it's, a, it's like having a drink with someone after work it's not necessarily having it's not necessarily the drink it's a relationship sharing and the mentoring that's happening and catching up with people and i know that you understand this because this is why you're doing this podcast it's so critical and it's a different conversation when i feel like when it's out of the office you come sit with me in my office when all owners of the company it's yeah, a dynamic. Then, yeah, we go on a different playing field, a different environment. We're having coffee or eating, you know, a little bit of lunch together, or have you over at my house, or whatever. It's yeah, dynamic. So true. I, I learned that um, when I was on my coffee tour, not knowingly, <laughs> and I would meet, um, I would meet a CEO of a fifty million dollar company, and we would go to lunch and coffee. But he would always say, "Oh no, let's go to lunch, Scott." And, and I'm like, oh, okay, sure, that'd be great. And we'd sit down, and what I found was a CEO of a very large corporation really can't talk candidly with the other team members or other, you know, the other advisors or partners in the company. And it was almost like he 
almost some of those people don't have friends, right? They're always working all the time. So when somebody actually takes time out and not, I'm not here to complain about work. I'm not here looking for a job. I'm not, you know, I'm not <laughs> like, hey, what's up? What'd you learn? What do you want to learn more of? In the same questions that I'm asking you, I, I would ask them. And they would be like, they, it just finally felt like, wow, I can actually talk to somebody. And there's been times where, believe it or not, Dan, I would have coffee with somebody, wouldn't, wouldn't say a word. And they would say, boy, this was the best coffee time I've ever had. <laughs> when I would go on tour run work when HBO or NBC or Patriots and, you know, not, not, not to do name drop all these big clients, but it didn't matter to me. And I think a lot of reasons kind of why I got the jobs or had the accounts is that forwardness of just having a conversation with people, especially being a photographer to make them feel comfortable was really what it was about and not knowingly when i look back is i had that ability to just make few there's willie to um i had that ability just to make people feel comfortable because of just regular conversations right and then i usually treat like that which is great and so i think that that tells you a lot about the people it's like i remember i i know uh, tom brady's dad your business. Great guy. He came By the way, not to interrupt you, Dan. Yeah. Little fact finder here for yeah. you. Uh, Tom Brady's father, Tom, yeah. actually went to strategic coach. He did. And Dan Sullivan was his coach back in the day. Uh, Tom uh, Brady, it was in the financial advisor yeah, world. He's an insurance guy, yeah. Insurance guy. And went to Dan Sullivan. And the um, and so I hear that all the time when I see Dan. And he goes, how's, how's Tom doing? How's Tom doing? And so actually and, I knew that because that's when I first met him. So the quick story is he came actually and spoke at my church. We were both share the same faith. And the whole time he talked about his daughter. Huh. Interesting. And the point behind it is like everyone knows who his son is. He's wonderful, unbelievable. And Tom is a dad to a number of children. Yeah. And so he wasn't all about like here and he actually wore a Super Bowl ring, by the way, but it wasn't all about that. And I just love people like that who will, they want to be real. <laughs> so, yeah, I had, a, I had a good conversation with Peyton Manning's father. Oh, yeah. Archie. Yeah. Archie, Archie Manning. He was a motivation speaker for talks and conferences. Huh. Um, and I had a great conversation about him. And he didn't, he didn't mention um, Peyton. He didn't mention you know, his two sons being in NFL college footballs. He talked about his youngest son. And and that's all he talked about. <laughs> it was great because I got to learn about the inside and not the inside information, but I got to learn something about somebody that I never knew before. That's my that's my always that's my one thing. I when I meet somebody I want to learn one thing about somebody that I didn't know before. Is it so refreshing when you're talking to a real person and you're getting a, having a real conversation like this? It's just it's so refreshing versus yeah. just the hey, how are you? Good, and you? Then they repeat, hey, how are you? Yeah, like, right. you just said all that. good <laughs> in good conversations, right? And just the people, people, right? We're people, 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 and and I call it self self aware. You know, if you're very really self aware of your surroundings, you know, I always want to know if I'm at a cafe you know, where I can get a second cup of coffee. So I'm always very self-aware of what's going on. I was speaking to another CEO and a leader and, and he was brand new at the company and he walked into the new facility. Nobody knew who he was. And he, when he first got in there, he went into the cafe and he started cleaning the kitchen up, you know, the, just like everybody else would, you know, just, you know, you clean up, you put things away. There was people coming in, going out of the cafe and then the time came where they had a gathering, huddle, as we call it, and um, to introduce the new CEO. <laughs> and they introduced him. The other team member said, this guy's going to be great because I just saw him at the cafe doing dishes. He's all in. <laughs> He's all in. I mean, Simon Sinek's leaders eat last. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and That's the concept, right? I mean. You want to be part of the people, part of the team. Bill Belichick is a coach and. Tom is a quarterback, but two different positions that play for the same team. And they show up every time at game time. You know, so if you're a leader, are you showing up? It was like, it was like the first one in there every day, last one to leave, took huge pay cuts. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people do stuff like that. Right. That's a leader. 
money will follow. And it's proven with Tom, money does follow because leadership and culture is, is number one. That's a, that's a big thing. And that's a lot of things what I've learned my tour with Three O'Clock Coffee with people. Culture, self-awareness, just being humble and having gratitude for people. It's been great. Well, I'm grateful for you, Scott. You've uh, been a great uh, blessing of someone to get to know, and you helped me you know, choose coach, and you've been very giving of your time. I've reached out several times, and, and just to invite me, you know, I'm just Dan Flanagan from Boston, you know. so Not just. You are the Dan Flanagan I am the Dan Flanagan, yes. By the way, speaking of that, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, because I, I know you're the number one fi financial advisor, not just for Massachusetts, but anywhere in the United States, how can they get a hold of you, Dan? Well, if they want, they can reach out to my email, which is dflanagan, F-L-A-N-A-G-A-N, canby, C-A-N-B-Y, financial.com. Flanagan. Hmm. Sounds Flanagan. like a perhaps Irish. Thing. A little Irish Catholic, Boston a Irish Catholic, family. Catholic, yeah, a little, little, little whitey bulger in there. <laughs> Park the car. Yeah. Park the car. Yeah, I try to. There we go. <laughs> Dan, this is awesome. This is great. Uh, maybe next time we'll um, we'll grab an Irish whiskey. or I like maybe, that. Yeah, maybe add it to our coffee, right? Absolutely. All right, Dan, thank you very much. You know, subscribe to the show. Pass it on to some of you now. And if you're listening, think, maybe rewind it. Play it again. And see what one thing that you can get out of this podcast. If you're going to spend the time, if you're driving, if you're running, if you're walking right now, listen to this. Ask yourself, what's the one thing that you received from listening to two guys having coffee at a cafe? Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Do you have a great story you would like to share with the world? If so, go to 3oClockCoffee.com and sign up today to be on our show. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and tell a friend about the 3 O'Clock Coffee podcast. There you go. Great idea, Scott. You're, you're a very creative guy.